All right, hello guys. Seven o'clock, four of you here. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I'll take that. I'll take four people. I'll take four people who want to listen to me talk all day as opposed to, you know, like 4,000 who hate my guts. Anyway, this is the second attempt to try to go live and to answer some people's questions. I told you I get questions all the time uh, on the channel four particular videos, you know, mainly the stone fireplace video. There's a second one up now. I'm starting to get comments on that one. Uh, the wainscoting video and, and things like that. People have questions and a lot of times I end up getting the same question and I'm trying this to see if perhaps I can answer your questions more completely and in a better way uh, than just typing it out. <clears throat> so if any of you have any questions that you would like to ask me about current projects, ongoing projects, uh, you know, just general questions about the channel or, or anything about me or my house or what we're doing around here, feel free to ask, fire away. I'll be glad to answer any of them you have. Um, so until I get a few questions, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the, the actually the first fireplace video that I put up. Uh, it's the stone ledger panels. They're, they're natural stone, meaning they're real. They're not cultured or synthetic. Uh, and they're probably a half to three quarters of an inch thick. And they're becoming really popular. A lot more people are using them. Uh, not only because they look really neat and modern, and it's a style that a lot of people uh, tend to be attracted to, but also because it is very user friendly. It's really simple to install and put together. Uh, in the old days before they started synthetic stone and before they started these ledger panels for homeowners and contractors to use alike, you used to have to have this artistic vision and skill set to be able to set stone. Uh, and there are alternatives, there are options now for people who want to have that look and don't have the money to spend on paying a professional to do it and, uh, and don't have the skill set necessary to do it themselves and these ledger panels they're built kind of like tetris pieces i don't know if any of you ever played tetris the video game but they're basically one foot across and they're six inches tall or they're two feet across and they're six inches tall but they they have a shape that one piece can come in and lay and then the next one just comes and ties right into it just like that um, but one of the one of the questions i get all the time is what are you using to attach the stone to the wall and what types of materials are okay for you to attach this stone to, meaning the substrate. Can it be sheetrock, can it be paneling, can it be tile board, can it be over brick? And the answer is yes uh, to all those. You can, you can install these over just about any, any kind of substrate as long as it is sound itself. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of nervous about putting it on sheetrock because they think, oh, you know, this is just paper and gypsum and it's just put up there with a few screws and the weight of the stone could pull it off the wall. And, and I, I get that. I understand some of your concerns about that. But as long as the, the sheetrock is put up and is still sound, uh, meaning that it has enough screws in it, uh, the screws are the nails that it was attached to the wall and the studs with are not popping out, uh, then as long as that sheetrock is sound, there's, there's no problem with these stones. They're designed to be thin so that the amount of weight is at a very minimum. And the stones are almost bearing on themselves, carrying that load all the way down to the bottom. Uh, so don't have any qualms about that. I had somebody actually tell me, because I recommended two types of adhesive. One is called mastic. We call it mastic here. Uh, it could be called type one. It's a premixed uh, item that you can get in one gallon or five gallon buckets at Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, any tile stores, places like that. It's mainly meant for backsplash. Uh, so in your kitchen, underneath your cabinet, underneath your upper cabinet, but above your lower cabinets, you'll have a backsplash usually. That's what they used to put tile up is the mastic. That's the glue that holds it to the wall. Then you grout it. Well. Okay, we've got a question. 
When did you start to take an interest in home improvements? Was it something you were good at right away? Doyle fan. Very good question, and I appreciate it. Uh, Doyle fan, let's see. When did I start to take an interest in home improvements? I would guess that it's probably about 15 or 16 years ago uh, when I got into construction. I got into construction as a necessity. I was looking for a job. I needed a job that paid me better than the current job I had. A friend of mine was laying brick and block for uh, a large masonry contractor in the area. He said, hey, come on, start out as a laborer. You shovel mud, you sling bricks, you keep the masons full you know, supplies and all that. So I started that. And then about three months into that, I started laying brick. And I just kind of took to it like a duck to water. Long story short, I've been in construction ever since because I found a way to take art and turn it into something that is not only aesthetically pleasing and beautiful, uh, but to make it practical. At the end of the day, when you're done laying a foundation, now they can build a house on top of that. Uh, things like that really attracted me. And then from there, you know, after I had, I don't know, masonry kind of run its course with me. I still do masonry, but I started to get into other facets of construction and mostly remodeling. Um, new homes are, are one thing, don't get me wrong, but it, it's a totally different animal to take something that's old, outdated, worn out, beat up, fallen down, crumbling, whatever, and then improve it and make it new again, make it usable again. So that's really when I started to get into home improvements, when I saw the artistic uh, potential in it. Uh, and was it something I was good at right away? Honestly, not to toot my own horn, but I would say yes. Um, you know, within about three months, I went from laborer to brick mason. And then about eight to nine months after that, I went from mason to running my own brick crew for that company. And I ran that crew for about three or four years and uh, then decided to move on and, and go elsewhere. Uh, so there really is not a lot that I haven't been able to pick up in the way of home improvement and remodeling and things like that. That said, there are still some things that I don't do. Uh, or that I don't spend much time on. Um, but I hope that answers your question. Thanks for that, Doyle fan. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, uh, back to the fireplace, the, uh, the adhesives. I recommend construction adhesive out of a caulk tube. And it's not caulk, but it's out of a caulk-like tube. Uh, that can be liquid nails. That can be Loctite. That can be any one of the construction adhesives. Or mastic. I had someone tell me, that mastic is not recommended for natural stone, that it was actually on the manufacturer's website. And that's true, and I've read that. That said, I've done a bunch of ledger panels, and quite a few of them have used mastic. I've never had an issue. I've never had any one of them fall off the wall. They're in my own home. Uh, also, with that being said, I do recommend using the construction adhesive over the mastic because it's a lot quicker, and it may even be cheaper. Uh, so. Cheryl, I hope I'm getting this right. I'm going to say Cheryl Kravitz, or Kravitz, possibly. Thank you so much for your tips. We love Airstone. I have done several projects. Does the basic masonry liquid sealer work for Airstone backsplashes? Uh, Airstone is actually a product that that is a synthetic stone. I was talking about that earlier. It's a manufactured or a synthetic stone what Owens Corning actually dubs cultured stone. It's designed to be a lot more lightweight uh, and to give you a real stone look and they come in a wide variety of colors and they can even be customized depending on the company that you get it from. Airstone is actually sold at Lowe's in boxes. It's got its own proprietary uh, adhesive and as far as the sealer for that I'm, I'm just taking a guess here that liquid sealer that is designed to penetrate the stone and then create sort of a, a candy shell on the outside of it so that anything that would splash on it um, would not soak into it. So it does that, it, it acts as a protectant, but it also acts as a color enhancer so that when you put it on there, it changes the colors a little bit. It makes it almost look wet. Uh, I, so, and again, I haven't done a lot of research on Airstone, but I do know a few things and I'm guessing that's what that is. If the basic, let's see, does the basic masonry liquid sealer work for airstone backsplashes? 
I would assume so. Uh, for an airstone backsplash in a kitchen, there would be a couple of concerns that I would have. Number one, you're not just dealing with a 2D object. And I realize that tile itself is not 2D. But for all intents and purposes in this argument, let's just say that that's a 2D surface. It's relatively flat. There's no ins and outs on it. There's not a lot of shelves that it can, uh, that it can have in it to catch debris and dust and things like that. Uh, when you introduce airstone into your backsplash, it, uh, it is going to open itself up to those possibilities. Uh, dusting it is going to be something that I would imagine would be a semi-frequent occurrence. Um, and as far as stain splashing up on it, if a stain splashes up against like spaghetti sauce or wine, wine glass spills, uh, if that splashes up against glass or ceramic or porcelain tile, it's going to run right down. Uh, when it splashes up against raw air stone that's untreated, it's most likely going to soak in. Now, being that the stone itself kind of has a mottled look, depending on what the stain and the liquid is splashing up against it, it may not show up. It may not be bad. It might look part of the pattern. That said, if air stone doesn't have a sealer that would protect it as a backsplash, you can most likely go to your Lowe's or Home Depot tile section and they have stone sealers. Now those are meant for natural stone, but it's the same concept. It penetrates a porous surface, gets in and builds, and it can either sit on top and give you a gloss look or it can give you a matte look so that it doesn't change or enhance the colors. So if you can't use, if you try a section of it, like take one of your air stones and kind of coat it with that sealer and then try throwing stuff up against it and see if it stains, see if it wipes away and see how long it takes for something to actually sit on the stone with the sealer on it to go and penetrate into the stone and stain it. And then if you don't like the results, try something out of your tile section. Hope that answers your question. Cheryl? Uh, Doyle fan, back again. Thoughts on bad contractors slash cheap craftsmanship just for quick money in your profession. Well, there's a lot. Uh, honestly, on my company, I list my company as our house makeovers first and handyman services. Handyman services to me is back burner. It's filler for me. It's not something that I want to spend my days doing. It's not creative uh, unless you're talking about problem solving, and I do enjoy problem solving. Uh, but I'm really not big on the handyman stuff. It's filler. It's things I do when I'm in between big jobs uh, to keep to keep you know food on the table. You know we're all in this for money. You have to be. Uh, I can go get a paycheck anywhere, but I make these videos and I run my business because I love making people happy. Uh, that being said, there are a lot of people out there who don't give two dams about anybody's happiness. All they want is the money. They don't care about the job turning out well. They don't care about the job being completed on time, and they don't care if you like it or not. Do my job, pay me, I'm out. There's a lot of that. It goes on. You're welcome, Cheryl, no problem. Uh, do I know a lot of those people? No. No, I don't personally know a lot of those people, uh, and if I do, I have disassociated myself with them. I don't consider myself to be one of those people. Uh, I do not want to foster or encourage any of that. Uh, if that's the case and you have a certain skill set and you're not using it to its max potential by putting in effort with each and every homeowner you encounter, then you need to find yourself uh, another line of work. Uh, I always try to go above and beyond. Always. <clears throat> Anytime I'm quoting a job, I always try and figure up, you know, hey, I think this is going to take five days, but I'm going to call it six to be safe. I think it's going to cost $1,500, but I'm going to tell them it's going to be probably $1,800 estimated just in case because very few jobs, even from the small jobs up to the large ones, it's, uh, it's very hard uh, to come in right on budget, right on time. There's always going to be something. Smokescreen, $5 donation for the last time you fed me. Thank you very much, Smokescreen, a.k.a. Chris, a.k.a. my cousin, <coughs> a.k.a. he has great hair and I don't. Five bucks, I appreciate that. I think that's $10 total that you've given me now in Super Chat. 
It's starting to become a pattern. I guess I'm going to have to keep feeding you. You missed burrito night last night, by the way. You never called or texted. They were great. I mean, I made them, so of course they were great. They were awesome burritos. Uh, next time, which will probably, I mean, let's be honest, burrito night's going to be tomorrow, too. I, I can't, I could eat Mexican food every day. So thanks for that, smoke screen. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so when it comes to bad contractors, they're out there. And I'll, I'll tell you this, a lot of the horror stories about bad contractors, be, take those with a grain of salt when somebody's telling you about a bad contractor experience that they had or you're reading it on their website or you're, uh, you know, you're seeing it on Facebook or something like that because I'm here to tell you, this is something that I do religiously. For as much as the people who hire me are interviewing me and sizing me up to decide if they want to hire me or not, if they want me in their home or not, I'm doing just the same amount of homework on them. So you got to take it with a grain of salt when somebody tells you they ran into a bad contractor. Are they super picky? Are they a pain in everybody's butt? Do they change their mind a lot? You got to ask yourself those questions. So I hope that answers it, Doyle. Jessica Hack, you might have gray hair. You just prefer to look like Mr. Clean, LOL. Well, that's true. When I was 18 years old, 17 years old in high school between my junior and senior year, the, uh, the top started kind of going away. And you notice when you're in there, you know, cutting your own hair and the clippers are like, eh. And there's nothing, there's no noise that comes out of this middle part of the dome up here. Yeah, that's when I started shaving my head real close. So, yeah. As far as Mr. Clean, hey, what's wrong with a, a, a big old guy who wears plain white t-shirts and keeps everything clean? What's wrong with that? Polly Ferguson, bless his hair. That's my wife. Yes. You could say bless my hair if I had any. I've got this, though. Look. This is coming in nice now. This has been connecting since I was like 16 years old, by the way. And if I could just step off on kind of a side soapbox note, are you guys with the little fickle beards up here that don't, they don't touch, they don't connect? It kind of looks like, you know, just, I don't know, random chest hairs on your face? Shave. Shave. Get rid of it. Get it gone. Cut it. Stop it. It's, it's not attractive. Stop. And comb your hair. Comb your hair. Bend the bills on your hats also. Kids, bend the bills on your baseball caps. Please, stop it with the flat bill thing. Make it over. All right. Jessica Hack, you and Smokescreen should collaborate and do a Game of Thrones mural or something. Ooh, 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 Star Wars. Chris says, I tried to tell him. Yes, my cousin, Smokescreen, some of you may be here through him because he has a lot more people following him than I do. Anyway, yes, at some point we are going to go live. I will be probably a guest on his show. I do not have the vast Game of Thrones or Star Wars knowledge that he has. But if you want to talk to me about the greatest generation of movies of all time, I will be glad to sit down and discuss the 80s and the early 90s movie genre with you. Side note, real quick. One of the greatest movies of the greatest era, the 80s. Weird Science. Supremely underrated. Anthony Michael Hall was a genius in that movie. He was a kid, and he was decades, decades ahead of his time. If you haven't watched it, shame when you go see it. If you haven't watched it in a long time, go watch it again. Pay attention. Compare him to a lot of the people now on movies and in comedies, and I'm telling you, he was a genius. He was brilliant in that thing. He was Michael Jordan on the screen. It was perfect. And Breakfast Club, yes. And Star Trek, I'll talk to you about Star Trek, especially Next Generation. Yeah, which is my favorite. I have a hard time picking between Picard and Kirk, but it's got to be one of those two. So, yeah, I'll definitely join him in a, uh, a live chat one, one day and... Uh, you know, things are kind of slow with the biz right now. Uh, any donations you guys want to give me would be more than welcome. Yes, Nerd Herd, definitely. Polly Ferguson, wife. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. 
anyway, I will definitely collab with him at, at some point, and I would like to have him come and collab with at some point. We've talked about actually building the Iron Throne, figuring out a way to build the Iron, Iron Throne. I'm sure somebody's already done it, you know, and obviously they had to build it for the set. They probably have more than one. Uh, I've actually worked on some movie and uh, television production sets. Um, so I'm sure that someone out there in the DIY world already has a video up on YouTube um, where they've built the Iron Throne. And I thought about trying to make it out of pallet wood, go find an old ch chair, you know, something I could reclaim, uh, use that as the main body of it, and then just go through the meticulous and time-consuming process of taking pallet boards, stripping them off of the pallets, drawing out the different sword shapes, and then cutting them out with a jigsaw, sanding them down, and uh, trying to spray the whole thing down with metallic spray paints and blacks and things like that. And I think we're gonna try that at some point. So uh, if I get enough interest in that, I'll, I'll definitely, that'll be something we'll do and we'll maybe put it up on his channel and my channel at the same time. Jessica Hack, could you do a Darth Vader sculpture or can you do sculptures? I have messed around with sculptures before. In high school, I was big time into art, as was my cousin Chris from Smokescreen. Ask him about it. Also ask him to take his hat off. But yes, we have messed around with sculpture. We did a few sculptures. I actually have one of my sculptures in my old high school still on display in one of the glass cases up there. It was terrible. Oh, it was awful. God, they put up some of the worst stuff in that school. So yes, I do I sculpt and uh, also you know, paint on canvas, things like that, watercolors also. Cheryl uh, Kravitz, I just wanted you to know that since your videos with the Airstone fireplace and the Wainscoat dining room, we used the ideas and made my daughter's new home look awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Cheryl. That's exactly what I hope will happen as a result of me putting these videos up. 99% of the people are going to be like, look at this idiot. This looks terrible. But you 1% who actually like it, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I like to think that I come up with some pretty good ideas. And wainscoting can be very expensive, especially if you hire a carpenter to do it. And it's really intimidating. Most people don't have the tools or the skill set to be able to do wainscoting. And this, you're using the sheetrock. You're just using some little trim. It's just a matter of measuring. It's very simple. It doesn't encroach on the room and take away actually square footage of the room. And uh, it, it turns out looking great. And it looks custom. And it, really makes everything look bright and formal. Uh, I think one thing I do want to do, I'm not sure if I want to do it in my dining room or not, but I would love to do a video on coffered ceilings. If you don't know what coffered ceilings are, go look those up. C-O-F-F-E-R-E-D, coffered ceilings. It's those 3D boxes that come down. It's like a grid pattern on, on your ceiling. And most of the time you see it in dining rooms or really uh, tall ceiling living rooms places like that I think I'd love to do some of that too and do a video on that Polly Ferguson Hunger Games yes I worked that was what I worked on was the Hunger Games uh, I worked on that movie set for about six months uh, the original Hunger Games movie here in Concord um, I actually it was a funny story uh, I found out I'd done some things for Tony Stewart in a production company out of Los Angeles some little webisodes uh, I loved it, and I really wanted to get more of it. And I asked those guys, I was like, hey, keep me busy. Put me put me working on these things in movies and TV. And they said, hey, you come out to California, you got a job. And uh, I'm like, well, I can't move to California, you know. But they told me some places to go look to try and tap into it. And I actually found out that The Hunger Games was going to be uh, filmed in North Carolina. North Carolina had gotten the tax breaks necessary to be able to get some of the bigger production, bigger budget movies in. So I ended up doing some research, found the guy who was actually in charge of the construction set building crews and all that. I tracked him down over the course of two weeks. He didn't want to be found. Found a way to contact him, sent him an email, hounded him, called him on the phone, and he called me up and said, bring your tools and you start, you know, Monday. Went out there and started working and was there for six months. It is an experience that I'm very happy that I had, but after that I had a chance to work on the TV show, um, God, what was the name of that? It was a new Showtime series at the time that was coming out. It was done by the same executive producers that did Six Feet Under, uh, Banshee, it's a Showtime show. Um, 
and I had an opportunity to go work on that. It was going to be the same scenario, and I actually just said, no, no, I'm good. I, I just turned it down. I didn't want to work on it. The, the atmosphere is it's much like a factory. At least that was my experience with it. And uh, it's just long days, a lot of days. It's thankless. Um, it's just not as sexy as you think it would be. So in the long run, it just wasn't going to be for me. And you'd have to travel around and chase work all over the country. And I've got wife, kids, house, family. That's, that's first. So my wife and Cheryl are talking. We are still in construction because it's just my daughter, husband, and I. But we sure will as soon as we're done. My wife was asking her for pictures. Yeah, definitely send us some pictures. That would be great. I don't know if you can leave pictures in the comment section. Uh, but that would be fantastic. We have a Facebook page where you can definitely go and post your pictures. I don't know if a lot of you have gone and found the Facebook page and liked it. There's probably about 500 likes on there now. But it's Facebook.com, Our House Channel. You can see beside me here in this little... Let's see. Yeah. This little stripe right over here beside me. I've got a Patreon account that you can make monthly donations to if you want to help me out, try and get some of my, my funds up to be able to do more elaborate projects and keep me going and making videos. And then down below that you'll see Facebook and Twitter slash Our House Channel. Um, that's, I, I post in there every now and then. I really haven't been doing much on the Facebook page or the Twitter page lately. Um, simply because I've been really busy. Uh, and honestly, I don't know that a lot of people see it on there. So when I post something on there, you know, like it, retweet it, comment on it. Let me know that you're, hey, we see it. It's here. Uh, keep it coming. Uh, because if I if I don't get any activity out of it, it's just something I tend to, uh, I don't know, just look over. Uh, and my cousin just put up the... Uh, Facebook and the Twitter links so that you can click on those. Uh, really appreciate that smoke screen. Thanks a lot. And I see we got up to nine viewers. I think we had 10 or 11 at one point, which is about what I had last week this time. So again, I'm thrilled with that. I'm happy. Uh, and again, I appreciate everybody who donates through Snapchat uh, and Patreon. Patreon is sort of a recurring monthly uh, thing that you can donate to. You can donate a dollar a month, five dollars a month, ten dollars a month a thousand dollars a month you know any of that really is okay and then in super chat here if you have a question that you would like to get recognized and you'd like me to call you out by name and read your question then if you donate here on super chat just by clicking the little monetary sign the dollar sign there below the uh, the text input window then you know you can donate a dollar five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars whatever you want to donate and and I'll definitely uh, make mention of you. Uh, and there's a Patreon link there too. Cheryl said, thanks, I will find you. Oh, I really appreciate that, go find us. And then, I don't know, you, I'm in North Carolina, so you may not be interested, uh, but I also have a Facebook page for Our House Makeovers and Handyman Services, which is my business. Um, I would travel within reason, uh, depending on you know the scenario. Uh, to do a job and also you can send me pictures on there and say hey you know can you give me a, a kind of a quote here on how much this ought to cost or something but yeah follow me on, on that as well I appreciate that Doyle fan four dollars thanks for answering my questions Doyle fan you are very welcome thank you so much for the donation uh, that is excellent it really helps me out keeps me doing this the more uh, the more money basically I can I can make off of YouTube the more it's going to free me up to do more YouTube to get more in depth in projects to do more projects spend more time uh, increasing the channel's worth and making it better for you guys uh, so any of that helps I really appreciate that thanks a lot smokescreen you didn't connect Nightbot I thought I did I clicked the little button at the moderator it's a good thing nobody's talking about toenails this episode. Anyway, there's Nightbot. It's supposed to kick people out who, you know, aren't really commenting like they should be on the video. Anyway, I think I'm going to call that a night. That's about a half an hour. That's what I'm going to keep the show at for now. Um, I think maybe 
these have been Q&A shows and me just kind of talking so you can get a little bit of info and insight from me and get your questions answered. Uh, but I think I'm going to include in these live streams, which I will be doing once a week on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, barring any kind of schedule issues. But I will start scheduling these ahead of time so that you'll get an event notification and it will also come up in your notifications to tell you, hey, our house is streaming live now, but I'm going to do this once a week for a half an hour. But what I would like to do also, it's aside from just the Q and A's, I would like to do a live episode where I'm actually doing a project live for you, and I can be explaining to you what I'm doing. I'll have to make it a quick and easy project, you know, something that I can really kind of work on the meat of it when in an hour or half an hour, something like that. Maybe some uh, palette signs or uh, just a quick down and dirty version of uh, some kind of decoupage or something like that. But I think I'm going to start doing that too. So if you have any ideas, find me on the Facebook channel, channel page. Leave me some comments, some ideas on what sort of project you would like to watch me do live. Uh, that will be greatly appreciated. And from there, I can get some ideas. And maybe I'll be doing that next week. We'll see. Cheryl said, we just moved from Texas to Maine. Bought a very old house and we'll do more stuff to our house soon. I've been to Texas. I've not been to Maine. I've been all over Texas. Uh, I really want to go to Maine. I hear it's beautiful, tons of water, tons of woods. Uh, Texas, the eastern half of Texas, has a lot of water, has woods. The western half, not so much. I still imagine that being a pretty dramatic change for you, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, Polly Ferguson, Jessica had a question. Jessica Hack, what's Nightbot? Nightbot is something that you install that is a moderator if people are using foul language or if they're using any of the words that I have flagged, such as racial slurs or words that I don't necessarily want associated with me or with my channel or I don't want other viewers uh, and chatters to be exposed to. I list all those and it has its own proprietary list in there of automatic stuff and it boots people out, prevents that from happening. It's like uh, chat cops. So anyway, like I said, I think I'm going to call this a video. Be sure to find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash our house channel. Leave me some ideas on some projects that you would like to see done live in the next streams. And if you would like me to increase those to an hour to be able to get those projects in, I will happily do that. As for the q and I'll probably keep it around a half an hour. I'll be back on next week. Like I said, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is going to be the standing time unless I have some sort of scheduling conflict in which I will post. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night.